Hi class, uh, here's another lecture. Um, this week we're going to be covering uh, storage and um, adding images uh, for the user profile and for posts. Um, that's the kind of last big update we're going to do to the functionality of the website um, before uh, the final. Um, so next week we'll do responsive design and then we'll add a couple little things after that and then we'll start working on the final. Just a couple notes on the schedule before we get started. Um, today is Monday. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna post this lecture um, and then tomorrow is Tuesday is actually on a uh, Wednesday schedule. So I'll, I'll post, I might post the whole thing at once or I'll post the second part tomorrow. Um, after that, we have the spring break. Uh, you're probably aware that the spring break dates got changed uh, because of um, the recalibration period. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the regular spring break uh, uh, dates. Um, so I won't have anything due until April 20th. Um, so that'll give us a little time to kind of uh, catch up on any assignments that you're missing or go over anything that you need to go over. Um, I think we'll have time at the end of the semester um, planning to extend the deadline for the final to the last day of finals, um, which is May 22nd. So that should kind of give us enough time to get everything done before then. Um, we really don't have too much to cover uh, uh, in terms of lectures. We have just a few more left. Um, and then we'll do a, a, a midterm um, sort of final project pitch, which I'll, I'll do a little demo for what the expectations for that are um, after spring break. And then we should have a few weeks or at least two weeks after that to work on the final, which will just be kind of your own customized version of the um, site. Uh, so if you have any questions about the schedule or what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks, just shoot me an email. Um, but uh, we should be I think we should be on track uh, more or less. We might be, have a little bit of a condensed schedule at some point, but I think we'll actually be fine. Um, so today I'm gonna go over some uh, basics for uh, Firebase storage. Um, I'll just kind of like go over how storage works um, and then I will uh, demonstrate adding a image as the user profile image. Um, and then for the homework this week, I want you guys to try to apply that same technique to a post. So adding an image to each post. Um, and I'll kind of do a similar thing that I did in the last lecture where essentially I'll say, you know, if you want to try to figure this out on your own to uh, practice your JavaScript, um, you can do that and just, you know, pause the video. Um, but I'll also include a more elaborate sort of like set of um, instructions for how to complete the assignment at the end. Um, so that way I don't have to worry about, um, you know, having to go over it with everybody since we're not in class. Uh, I'll just do that on video and um, you guys can kind of decide for yourself uh, when you're ready to do it. When we get back from spring break, we'll pick up with responsive design. Um, so we'll add some stuff to the layout and the rest of the site. Uh, and that'll be kind of the last big topic that we do um, before we start talking about the final. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to get started with the demo. So this week we are going to be looking at Firebase storage. And basically what that means is adding uh, multimedia to our database. So um, let's go ahead and open up Firebase uh, now so we can take a look at this. So I'm just going to go to console.firebase.google.com. And I have to make sure to choose the MMP350 account. Uh, and we're working on this database here, MMP350-S20. So that's our shared database. So I'm not exactly sure why this menu is only in the sort of like icon mode. Uh, OK, that looks better. Um, so in our Firebase database, so far we've looked at authentication, um, which we use to sign in uh, users. Um, we've added some stuff to the database as well. Um, so we have posts and we have users. Uh, and inside the posts we have some information like the date and the text of the post and the user who wrote it. And for our users we have some information like the display name, 
Um, some of our users might have other data, like the bio, hobbies, location. Um, the thing that's similar about all these types of data is that they're, they're quite small pieces of data. They're things like long numbers, um, strings of text, or these UIDs. So all of them are pretty small. Um, we can view them really easily in the database. Um, if we want to save things like images, uh, images and other uh, file assets like audio files or um, uh, videos or things like that, they have a, a lot more data. And so we wouldn't want to represent them um, in like a small space like this. Um, and so the way that we save images that we want to uh, include in our application is in the storage section. So storage is kind of like cloud storage if you've ever used like iPhoto or Google Cloud Photo or um, other cloud uh, services. Um, the storage section uh, basically allows us to uh, save uh, multimedia files and then it will give us back a URL that we can then reference um, with our user. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to add a profile image for each user, um, or at least give them the option to add a profile image. For the homework, we'll add the ability to add images to each uh, post. Um, so we can set up the Firebase storage section. Um, this is something that we're all sharing, so you guys don't need to worry about doing this uh, on your own. Um, so I'm just going to create a new Firebase with some basic default um, security rules and just choose a location for the database. So we'll go with US. Um, and that's going to create a bucket for us. So our storage section uh, is going to look basically just like a file browser. Um, we'll have different folders for each user to store files. And those folders will contain images um, or whatever other types of media we want to include. Um, so uh, for now, let's get started editing the project. Um, so I'm going to open up GitHub um, like usual and switch to uh, the repository, uh, make sure I'm up to date. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Sublime Text. Okay, so we can see all of our files. Um, but I also want to create a new folder um, like we do when we start each new section. So I'm going to go to Show and Finder. Uh, and I'm just going to go to MMP350. Um, and the last section that we did was the layout. So I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to duplicate that one as usual. So I can hit Command D on Mac or Command C to copy and Command V to paste on Windows. Um, so I'm just going to make a new folder and I'm going to call this um, storage. Uh, and so this is going to be the new version and this is where we're going to start to add images into our posts. Um, and so I've got that ready to go. I'm going to go over to my Sublime Text and open up the index page for my uh, main landing page and just add a new link here. Um, so this is list item and then anchor tag. And this one is going to storage. And I'll call this link storage and just close the anchor tag and the list item. And then I'm going to go to Tools and start my Sublime server. Uh, and so once I've got the Sublime server running, I can open a new tab, go to localhost 8080. Uh, there's my MMP350 folder. And I'm going to click Storage. And to start, it basically looks like the site that we already have, um, uh, which I added a layout to last time. Um, I don't know if I really like this layout. I might switch layouts. Let's see, what was the other uh, layout that I did? Um, I guess they're pretty similar. I might go with layout one. Uh, it's a little simpler. Um, so I'll just do that now. Um, so I'm going to close index.html, open up storage. Uh, and if I want to switch my layout, I'll just go to style.css and change this to layout one. So um, now that we're kind of done with our, our layout project, you might want to go ahead and just delete uh, the extra layout files. Um, so if you're going to stick with one layout, you can delete the other one. So I'll just uh, delete layout two um, and rename 
layout one to just plain layout. Um, and so then I can just call this layout. And so I could do that with my typography as well. Um, eventually, uh, for the final project, you'll want to kind of um, make all those changes so you can, so it's easy to see what your sort of final version is. Um, so for now, I'm just going to do the layout. And I'm already logged in, uh, so that's good. You can look at the video from two weeks ago on the database if you want to uh, cover how we did that again. Um, but I won't go into too much detail there. So we're just going to stay logged in. Um, and we've got this edit profile button. So that's where we're going to start today. I'm going to go over to edit profile. And so we have our profile name uh, and the bio and we have our update profile button. Um, and what I want to do here is give the user the ability to add an image uh, as their profile image. And we can display that um, next to uh, their um, each one of their posts. Um, so it would look kind of how you would see it on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or any other uh, web application. Um, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to close style.css and open up uh, profile.html. Um, and so there's a couple things that we're going to have to add in here to make this work. Um, so we'll do that again when we go over uh, adding the posts. Um, so we're going to start with profile.html. Uh, we'll do some editing here. Uh, then we'll also edit our profile.js file. I don't think we're going to have to add any new files here. Um, so we'll just be editing files that we've used before. Um, so the first thing that we have to do to access the storage in our Firebase application is to actually load a new script here. So we've added a Firebase script for our basic app, for the authentication, and for the database as well. Um, and so now we're just going to add another one of these scripts. So we can just copy that and paste and change this to storage. And the other thing that is already filled in is this storage bucket right here. Um, because we just created the storage, um, I want to make sure that that looks right. Um, so I'm going to go to the project settings and just take a look at the storage bucket. And that looks the same, um, so we can leave that the way it is. So we just have to add that script into the head section. Um, remember, you'll have to do that when you edit index.html as well. Um, so then let's scroll down a bit to our profile section here. So we can see uh, the input for the username, which is up at the top. Uh, we see the text area where we can edit the bio right here, and then the button where we update the profile. Um, and on your site, you should have a couple extra inputs that you added as part of the assignment uh, two weeks ago. Um, so yours is going to look a little bit different than mine, but um, mostly the same. Um, so on this page, we're going to have to add a couple of things. Um, so first we'll have to add an image uh, to contain the profile image, which we'll add in the database. And then we also need to add a new special kind of input, which allows a user to upload a file um, to a website. Um, so I'm going to start with that. It's just a couple of lines. So we'll start with the image. Uh, and we have some options here. So I'm just going to say image ID equals uh, profile dash image. And we can add the profile image here. Um, one thing that we'll see is that we have, if we have an image, let me open this up a bit. So if we have an image inside of our profile that doesn't have any information in it, it's not going to take up any space. Um, so we might want to add a default image there. This is kind of optional, um, but we want, we could have an image there that just sort of says like, this is kind of a placeholder. Um, you see that in a lot of services like GitHub where they kind of like generate an image for you if you don't create your own uh, profile image. Um, just to save some time, I'm just going to use uh, an image of an egg like uh, they used to do on Twitter. Um, so I'm just going to search for an egg and just find an image here. And we'll just basically take an image uh, of an egg. Um, let's make sure that it's labeled for reuse. Um, here's a nice egg from Wikimedia. So I'm just going to grab that image. It's 
very large. So maybe I'll see if there's a smaller version. Uh, let's see. 700 should be good enough for what we want to do. Um, although it's sort of an odd size. Let's see if we can find an image um, that's in profile or that's a landscape image. Um, this is kind of a fun one. Maybe we'll try this one. So this is a pretty interesting looking egg. I'll just grab the uh, 1024 version of that. Um, I'm just going to save this as. So this is I'm just going to be a local image. It doesn't actually have to be in the database because it's going to be the same for everybody. Um, so I'm going to go to MMP350, go to storage. And we actually don't have any images um, in our project up until now. Um, so I'm just going to create a new folder and call this image IMG for image. And I'm going to rename this something a bit shorter. Uh, just call it egg. And so that'll be our default image. So if there's no image here, what we'll see is that egg. So I'm just going to say image source um, is img slash egg.jpg. And there we see our image. It's very large, so it's kind of uh, breaking our um, it's breaking our layout a little bit. I can fix that pretty easily by just saying width is 100%, so it'll match the, the size of the, of the window. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that into my CSS. So I'll go to CSS, go to main.css, and this is going to be kind of a default um, rule for all of my images. So I'll just say IMG, and width is 100%. So now that'll be permanent. Um, I'm starting to notice that my layout looks a little strange here because my profile section doesn't have a layout. Um, so let's go fix that real quick because um, I guess we were focusing on the index page when we were doing the layout. So if I go to layout.css, the section that I was using in the main page was posts. And that's kind of like the main section. Um, so let's go ahead and also add profile here and so now they should have the same rules and so now the profile on this page will match um, the profile that we have on our home page uh, and I'm also noticing that I don't have a link to the home page so that's something else that I'll need to create so let's go back to profile.html so I have my profile image and under that I'm just gonna add an input for the user to change their image. So there's a special type of input for this. It's file, or sorry, it's type equals file. Um, and so that'll add a special input. And then we'll just give it an ID so we can reference it um, on our JavaScript. So we'll call this uh, profile image uh, input. And so now when we take a look, now we see a choose file button, which will open a dialog box on our computer where we can then add a file. Um, and so ultimately we want this file to replace um, the egg that we see. Choose file button will allow us to choose a file from the computer, um, but we need to also upload that file. So we're gonna add a new button here. Um, the update profile button will just kind of handle the text information. Um, we'll have a separate button to update the image because they're sort of unrelated processes. Um, so the last thing I'll put in here is a button. ID is update profile image. And um, I'll just say upload profile image as the text. And so that's pretty straightforward. We can choose a file and then we can upload that file. Um, so let's go ahead and add some JavaScript. Um, this is actually going to be relatively easy. The helpers are going to be doing a lot of the work here, but let's just see what we need to do. Um, so we need to open up uh, profile.js again, um, and I'm going to do my split view here just so we can see um, both of these files at the same time. And so to do that, I'm just going to reduce the text size a little bit. Hopefully that's still visible. Um, I'll close the file browser just to make a little more space on the screen. So uh, in our profile.js, we've got references for uh, the rest of our profile elements. 
And so now we just need to add some references for the three elements that we just added. Um, so I'll create a new section here and I'll just say uh, profile image. And so we're just gonna use each ID uh, for one, two, three images, uh, elements. Um, so js.getL is uh, profile-image. Um, and I guess I'm using double quotes for these other ones, so I should stay consistent with that. So that's the profile image. Um, we also need a reference to the uh, file input, so we'll just say um, profile image input, and that's js.getL. Uh, profile image input. And then our button is the last one, so we can say constant um, update profile, or let's just call this profile image button. Our variables are getting a bit long here. Profile image button. That's js.getl uh, profile image button. And so that's going to give us uh, references to each one of our um, elements that we need to make this work. Um, so uh, we've got those references. Um, we can see them in the console. So we oh, add a semicolon there. So we can see those in the console profile image. So that's just that image right there. Um, profile image input is that file input and profile image button uh, looks like that's null. Did I get that one wrong? Oh, that's update profile image. Okay, so I should be a little more consistent with these naming uh, conventions, but as long as they're the same, as long as they match, doesn't really matter. Um, so, uh, let's Scroll down a bit. Um, so we've got all of our references up at the top here. Let's scroll down a little bit um, down here. And so we'll just say, this is where we're going to upload a profile image. And so we wanna make sure that the user has um, clicked on the profile image button first. Um, so that's how we'll know that the user has added an image. Um, so we'll say profile image uh, button and I'm just gonna use a dot on click here because we only need one um, event here so we're just gonna say dot on click and that equals function and so we're gonna do everything we need to do inside of this function um, so the first thing we want to make sure is that they actually chose an image uh, so we don't want to try to um, add an image that doesn't exist so I'm gonna take this profile image input and the way I can see if they add an image is I'm going to get a reference to the file. So I'm going to say constant file equals profile image input dot files. And that's actually a list because you can add more than one file at a time. So we're just going to look for one file. So we can get the zero index from that list. Um, and if that exists, we'll try to upload it. If it doesn't, then we're just not going to do anything. Um, we could give them like a message or something like that, but um, for now, we're just going to work with it. Um, so let's log that file just so we can see what it looks like. So if I just click upload, if I just click upload profile image, you can see it's undefined. So we haven't added an image yet. If I click choose file and I choose like a cat image that I have here. Um, now we can see this is changed to cat.jpg, and if I click upload profile image again, oh, whoops, I guess I, okay, so if I click cat.jpg, click upload profile, so now we see some information about that file, um, and that's what we're going to send to the database. So it has a name, um, it has a date for when it was created or modified, um, it has a size uh, in bytes, um, so it's not a terribly big photo. Uh, and then we have a type of image as well. Um, so that's all the information we need to be able to add it into the database. Um, so we want to test if there is a file before we try to upload it. 
And the way we do that is just using our conditional statement um, if and then file. So if file is undefined like it was before we added the image, then none of this code will run. Um, if the file is defined, then we want to update our, um, our database. We want to put the image in storage, and then we also want to add it uh, to the user profile in the database. So the first part of that is relatively easy. We can use one of our helper functions, and I'm going to add an updated helper uh, uh, JavaScript file into, uh, I'll add a link to that because there are a couple new things in there. Um, so I'll add a link to that in the YouTube video. So to upload an image, we just say upload image, and then we give it the file as the first argument. Um, and then we give the user uh, UID, which we already have a reference to up here. Um, so we're just going to grab that. And then uh, we're going to um, add the name of the image that we want to use. So I'm just going to use profile-image as the name. Just keep it simple. Uh, and that will actually upload the image. So let's give that a try and we can take a look at the image in uh, storage. Um, so I'm going to refresh this page and I'm going to choose an image and click open and upload the profile image. And uh, right now we're not getting any response because we haven't added any other code. But if we go back to uh, storage and reload, hopefully we'll see an image. So you can see that our users folder has been added and here's the user that I'm currently signed in as and there's my profile image. Um, and so you see the image there and it's being hosted on Firebase. So when we click on that image we can see um, it's actually you know at this Firebase cloud storage. Um, and so now we have a location for the image but you can see it's not automatically going to update the user image here. We're going to have to do that on our own. So when we upload the image, Firebase actually sends us back some information about that image, which we're going to capture now. Um, and so this is a slightly new thing that we haven't looked at before, but it's going to be pretty simple. Um, there's a special thing that I can add at the end of this long uh, function. So I'm going to go to a new line with the semicolon, and I'm just going to say dot then. Um, and I'm going to put a function in here that's going to take the data that we get back. So I'm going to say add profile image. And I'll make that a new function down here. Um, so the semicolon, I, so this dot then profi add profile image goes in between the end of the line and the semicolon. Um, usually with JavaScript, this is starting to get pretty long. And so to make it easier to read, I can just put this on a new line and indent over one just to make it clear that the dot then is related to this uh, FB function. So now we can add this function, add profile image. And what we're going to get back from Firebase is an image URL. And so that's just going to be the actual um, URL to the image that we see here. Um, and that's something that the helpers, are, the helpers file is really doing for us. Um, so let's take a look at that image URL just to make sure it works. And I'm just going to keep uploading the same image here just to, uh, for simplicity. So I'm going to click open, update profile image. And there we see we get back this uh, image URL, which would take us um, to that image that we just uploaded. Um, and since we uploaded it to the same name, it's actually just going to replace um, that image that we had there. So we're not actually like making multiple copies of this image. Um, so I've got the image URL. I can assign that to uh, my profile image. So I can do that right away. I can say uh, profile image dot source equals image URL. Um, but then I'm also going to want to update my user profile. And we already know how to do that. We've been doing that uh, in previous examples here. So we can just use the update profile function. Um, so we can say fb.update profile. Uh, profile UID, so same thing. And then instead of bio, what we're updating is the image URL. So I'm going to say image URL um, and then add image URL here. So that will take the image URL from the storage 
area and add it to the database. And that might seem like a little uh, repetitive or overly complicated, but um, just adding the image online doesn't actually give us access to that image. We have to know where it is in order to get a reference to it. Um, so let's try that again. I'm going to say choose file and click cat and click open and then upload profile image. And there we go. We got back the image URL and there's our cat. And if we look in the database, uh, we can find, hopefully, the user. What user am I? Uh, this one. So let's see if we can find that user. Here we go. So now you can see that image URL got added to the database. Okay. And that's the image you know, that we see here. Um, so just a couple little things we're going to add on this page before we go back to index.html. So now we do have that image, but if we reload the page, you see the default image there. Um, so I can add in, just like I have this if user.bio, um, now I have a new field in my user info section. So just like we did a couple weeks ago, uh, we can add in if user info.image URL. So if there's a new image URL inside that user info, then we can just do exactly what we did down here, which is add the image URL to the source. So I'm just going to paste that up there. Um, but now it's part of user info, so I'm just going to add user info.image URL. And so now it should load the correct user image. Um, one last thing I want to do, or two more things. Uh, if I'm not logged in, so if I'm logged out here, I don't want some random person to be able to change the, the profile image. So we're just going to add these um, input and button here into our CSS uh, to hide them if we're not logged in. Um, so down here where we're authenticated or not authenticated, um, I'm just going to add a couple rules here. So I'm going to move this over here. Um, so this is in main.css. So if we're not authenticated, then the profile image input, and uh, I'm just going to add this to a stack right here, and the update profile image, both of those elements should be display none if we're not logged in. Okay, so if I'm not logged in, um, we don't, we're not going to be able to update this uh, Profile, so we can see the information of the profile. There's the bio, there's the uh, username, um, but we can't actually, uh, you know, edit anything. So then, if we do log in, okay, we want to change to display block. Um, so I'm just going to grab those guys and add them to this stack here as well. Um, pretty simple. So now, if I log in. Well, we see the update profile. What happened here? So that's body.off, profile image input. Let's see. Oh, I got to add, whoops, I got to add body.auth in front of all these. So it's a little repetitive, but it'll, it'll work. OK, so now we have uh, our profile image and our uh, update profile. Um, now we're seeing that, oh, because we made this display block. Um, that's okay. I'm not super concerned about that right now. Um, so then the last thing I want to add just to kind of make the site work a bit better is um, if I am on the profile page, I do need like an easy way of getting back to the home page. Um, I'm going to link the title, but I'm also going to add like a link to make it a little more obvious. Um, so I'm going to go back to profile.html, and I'm just going to put an anchor tag inside of this h1. So I'll say href is index.html. Um, so we're going to just turn that main title into a link. Uh, it does change the uh, typography, so let's see if we can fix that. So our title, let's see. So our anchor tag looks like that. So if we want to fix that, I'm going to open up the file browser again. 
Um, if I add an anchor tag inside the H1, that now means that these anchor styles get applied to the text um, instead of the H1 style. So I'm just going to go to CSS, uh, go to typography. Um, so that's another example where I'm using typography 2. So let's delete typography 1. Just doing a little house cleaning here. Um, let's rename typography 2 to typography. And then let's just make sure we're loading typography and not um, typography 2. So we have the H1, and let's just add in H1A as well. So that would be any anchor tag that's inside of an H1. So that should fix that issue. And now we can see it's a link. And the text is quite small. Um, let's see why that is. So our anchor tag font size is going to be text size. Um, so we can just add a rule. Uh, where is this? On color. This is in typography. Oh, we see the font size right here. Um, so let's just add a rule for font size uh, for H1 and H1A. We'll just say font size is 1 REM. So REM is just the um, body size. And then let's try 2. Let me make that a little bigger. OK, there, there we go. So we're back to normal. Um, so I can click back here, and I can get to edit profile. Um, so with the underline, actually, I think that's good enough as a link. So let's just go back to the home page. OK. So we've added the image uh, to the user profile, but now we need to show those images with our user's posts. OK, so let's go back to our one column view. I'm going to close most of this stuff. Um, and I'm just going to go into the JavaScript file uh, display posts, which is what actually displays the post right here. And we'll see now um, with one of the users will have an image. And with uh, the rest of the users, we're not going to have an image. So I'm just going to um, console.log the user info. Um, and so we can see uh, whichever my user is. Let's see. Not this one. Um, well, actually, you know what we can do is we can just say user info dot image URL. And we'll see for most of our users, it's going to be undefined. But for one of our users, they have an image, which is the one that we just added. So as you guys are working on the project, you can add your own user's image URL so that we'll have more images on the site. But for now, let's just add um, a, our placeholder image, the egg, or um, our main image here. Um, so we can do that as we create each post because we get the reference to the user image. We know that not all of the images have, um, or not all of the users have an image. Um, so we can create an image and then assign it to have either our default egg image or um, the, the image URL. So um, we have our post, and then we add the post, and then we add the text. So let's add the image next. Um, so I'm just going to create the image. So say this is the user image. Um, and so we'll create an element. And it's going to be an image element, IMG. And it's going to be post. Uh, well, actually, let's call this post dash uh, profile image, because you're going to have a, a, another post image later. Um, and so we're going to have a user image no matter what, just to take up that space uh, in the layout. But we're going to have an an image either way. But if there's no uh, user info image, uh, then we'll just add our default image. So let's check to see if the user info has the image URL. So we'll say if user info dot image URL. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. So if it exists, then the user image dot source gets user info dot image URL. And if it doesn't exist else, uh, then the user image source gets that, um, that uh, egg image that we added here. So that's just a local image, so img slash egg.jpg. Um, and we're going to add some styling using this class here um, so that it doesn't look too crazy. So let's just append that. So we'll say a post.append. 
append child um, user image. And there we see now some of our users have this little, or our one user with the cat image versus all the egg images. Um, so let's style this so it doesn't look too crazy. Um, but we're actually, in a, next week, uh, we'll look at um, using the Flexbox, which is going to give us a lot better options for styling our, um, uh, our posts. So here's our posts. Um, here's the class post. We have the post text, and then we have the profile image. So um, we can add just a few styles in here just to make it look a little bit better. So for example, um, if I want to get that like sort of Twitter, Facebook look, I can add a border radius um, to the image, and I'll just make it uh, very wide so that it'll kind of make the image into a circle. So if I say like 100 pixels, we get those circular um, edges. And then I can restrict the width of the image. So I could say width is 100 pixels and height is 100 pixels. And so then I'll get a little circle. Um, it looks like my image is a bit distorted. Uh, let's actually bring the image width up a little bit to make it more visible. So then the border radius will do 200 pixels. And then for the height, I wonder if there's a way to make this smaller without distorting the image. Let's Google it. So if I do CSS, um, small image square without distorting image. Uh, looks like there's a CSS fix for this. Object fit equals cover. Let's see if that actually works. Oh yeah, not bad. Okay, so then if I chink out the height. Okay, so not bad. I've actually never seen that rule before, but that really fixed things. Let's make this a bit smaller. Let's say 120 pixels by 120 pixels. Whoops. I'm going to go to CSS and go to post.css. So for the post text, um, I'm going to say display is inline. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to not worry about this for now. Um, so after these CSS rules, which you guys should have these filled in because you should have these styled, but um, you know I don't have these in my example. So I'm going to go to post uh, image. And I'm going to say uh, width is 120 pixels, height is 120 pixels, object fit is, um, what was it, cover. And border radius is 120 pixels. So I want the border radius just to match the width and height. Uh-oh, that didn't work. Let's see. Post profile image. Okay. Post dash profile dash image. Okay. So then let's see if I can position the image without having to worry about the um, post text. So let's see. If I say position is absolute, uh, that kind of moves it out a little bit. And then if I say... Um, right is zero. Uh, so then we need to make our post position relative. Okay, and then we need to give it a little bit of height, 120 pixels. And let's see. Okay, let's try that. So post, let's say position is relative. And we're going to have better ways of setting this up soon. Um, I'm just trying to come up with a quick way to display it. So for the image, we'll say uh, position is absolute. And let's say the right is 1EM. OK. And let's make our post big enough to accommodate the image. So let's say um, the height is 120 pixels. Um, and then some, for some reason, okay, let's also say the image top is zero. Okay, there we go. So now our image fits inside of our post. It's not perfect, but at least 
Um, it's not sticking out anywhere. And we'll come up with a better way to organize this information later. I think the image could also actually be a bit smaller at this point. So let's make it like 100 instead of 120. OK, that looks pretty good. Uh, and then actually, we can move it over here. So for the right, let's just say 5 pixels. And for the top, we'll say 5 pixels. OK, that's not so bad. Um, so I'm just going to leave that the way it is for now. Um, you guys can play around with that if you want to try to get a different styling for that. But I um, just want to display the image for each user um, as they're posting. So let's try adding a new post and seeing if that works. So I'm going to say this is a new post testing the user image. And click publish. And there we go. So we still have the same user image and the, same, and the text looks good. Um, and then you guys will also have to have the date and the, the author written there as well. We're done adding the image. Let's talk a bit about the assignment. Um, so I'm just going to start over here. This is the assignment, uh, adding images to the posts. Um, so just like we added an image to the user profile page, we want to add another image um, if as an option when you create a post. So start by just adding the file input uh, to the um, post page. Um, so you actually don't need the upload profile image here. Um, you can just use the file input um, and add that in here. And that should be an option, so you'll have to check if there is a file before you add it. Um, and so then, uh, once you add the file, um, we need to put it in storage. And then we also need to uh, update the um, display posts so just like we're adding the user image here, um, we'd want to add another image uh, for if they added a post. Um, so th this one is a little bit complicated. There's a lot of like different things that you would need to do um, to get this to work, a little bit of critical thinking. Um, but most of it would just be taking the uh, profile.html, just grabbing this, uh, in this file input here. You only really need that one. Um, adding that into the post, uh, publish post area on index, um, then going to profile.js and uh, basically taking the um, profile image input and adding this part into your publish.js uh, uh, file here. Um, so that's pretty simple. And then adding into display posts as well. Um, so it's a few different parts that you have to kind of do um, the helpers file is going to really do a lot of it for you. Um, but this is the chance for you guys if you want to try it on your own. Just pause the video here and see how far you can get. Um, and then, you know, come back. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm just going to go over the solution. Um, I realize that, you know, a lot of you guys are just going to watch it and just do it, and that's fine. Um, since we're not in class and I won't be able to go over everything with you guys, I think this is just going to be an easier way to make sure everybody stays on the same page. Um, so it's really up to you guys if you want to challenge yourself and give this a try. Um, you should do that now uh, and you know just stop the video here. Um, if you have already done that or you just you know want to go straight to the solution, um, I'll start that now. So um, basically, we're just going to go over to index.html to start. Um, and one thing that is a little tricky with this is you have to remember on profile.html that we added a new script file. So that's one place a lot of people will get tripped up is we need to add um, the support for storage here. So we're just going to copy and paste that script file and change this to storage. OK, so now we can actually access the storage. So that's the first thing we need to do on index.html. Then I'm going to scroll down a little bit to this publish post section. And so I'm just going to throw this file input here in between the text area and the button. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, it's just going to be an optional uh, input. So I'm going to say input type equals file. And to grab this in JavaScript, I'm going to give it an ID. I'll just say file, or let's call it um, post image input uh, instead of the profile image input. Um, so that's it for the HTML. Um, we can choose a file if we want, 
you might want to say, you know, this is optional or whatever, because the way it is now, it kind of seems like you have to put one. Um, but, uh, you know, you could add a label there or something like that. So we've got the HTML. Let's connect that to our JavaScript. So remember, the publish.js script is what actually publishes a post. So if we look at that, it's pretty small. Um, we just have a few things here. So let's just start by adding a reference to uh, our input here. So I'm going to copy that and just add that up at the top here. So constant um, post image uh, gets uh, js.getl uh, post input, post image input. Um, so I guess we can call this post image input if we want. And we don't actually have to like display the image yet. So we really only need um, the image input. And we have a button already to publish the publish button here. So we're not going to worry about that either. The thing that's tricky here is that we have this fb.publish post and it has the user ID and the text that they wrote. Um, but there is a third argument that's optional, which is uh, the image. Um, but we can't upload an image if it's not there. So what we have to do first is check, just like we did in um, profile.js right here, if there is a file. Um, so we're going to try to get a reference to the file first. So we're going to say if or sorry, we're going to say constant file is post image input dot files. Remember, we have a list of files there, so we just want the first one. So we're going to look at the zero index of our list. And so that'll get a file if it's there. So then we'll say if there's a file. Um, so if there's a file, we're going to do a very different version. So we're going to take this and paste it in here. Uh, and we're just going to put in the file at the end. Um, else, if there's no file, then we'll just do our regular version. Um, so that's really all we have to change uh, in publish.js um, because everything else can stay the same. Um, and so once we publish the file, uh, or once we post the file to the storage and add it to the database, um, we'll see those values, but we need to actually use them to display the posts. So let's test that first. So I'm going to reload this page, and I'm just going to compose a post and say image test. And then I'm going to choose a file. Um, I want to choose a file that's not uh, the cat file so we, we don't get confused. Um, I just have this random uh, image on my computer, so I guess I'll use that. I'm going to click Open, and I'm going to click Publish. Um, and so we got the image test, but we, didn't, we don't see the image here because um, we didn't add any code to our display images so, uh, or display posts. So let's just make sure that the image worked. So um, if it worked, it should be in posts. It should be kind of towards the end here. Yep, there's our u image URL. So helpers added that for us. We don't actually have to worry about that part. Um, so, we, so we know the image URL got added. Let's make sure it showed up in storage. So we can go to users. We can see we have a, a user here, and then we have a new image. And the name of the image has actually been changed to match the, uh, the post, just so um, we can't accidentally overwrite an image. We know that the post will be a unique ID. But we see the image there, and now we just want to display it on the page. Um, so to do that, we go to displayposts.js. And we're going to do something similar to what we have here. Um, but because our default is that there is no image, we don't want to add an image either way. So this image part is actually going to go inside of the if statement. Um, so this one's a little different. So instead of our user info, that's for the profile image. Um, we're going to look for the image URL in the post data, so the post image. So I'll put a comment here that says um, add profile image. And then I'm going to say add post image. And this whole section is going to be optional, so it's going to start with an if statement. So if post data dot uh, image URL. So that's when we'll create the image. So it's a little bit different. Instead of creating the image first and then checking to see if it's there, we're going to just check first and then we'll make the image. So we'll say constant post image is js.createl. Um, it's an image tag again. We're going to give it a different class. So we'll just call this post-image. And then we'll say um, post image dot source to set the source for the image is post data dot image URL. 
and then we just need to append it. So just like we did here, we're going to take our main post and append a new child. So say append child, the post image. And so now when we refresh this page, we should see the image that was added. And obviously we have an issue here, which is that it kind of covers up a bunch of stuff. So let's see if we can fix that. So we have the post text profile image there, and then our post image. So why is that sticking all the way out? Oh, because we have like a default height. So let's, let's see if we change this to our min height. There we go. So if we just change it to min height, that'll kind of fix that. And right now we have our images overlapping a little bit. I don't really, I'm not super worried about that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. Um, we'll add some other styling later. Um, so let's, let's just uh, fix that in, in our CSS. So I'm going to go to CSS, post.css, and change height to min height. And there we go. Okay, so now that actually looks okay. Uh, so let's test another image. Um, I don't think I have any other images on my computer. Um, so I'm going to download another image um, of a different cat. So I'll go to images, uh, tools, usage rights, labels for reuse. Um, this one's pretty nice. I like that. So let's grab it. Uh, free download. Allow. And so that should be in the downloads folder. Okay, so now when I, if I want to make a note post, I can say here's another image. And I'll say choose file and go to downloads and choose that image and click open and click publish. Uh oh, what happened? Um, let's see. Oh, there it goes. I guess it just took a second to load. Um, so that's okay. Uh, we might need to figure that out at some point, but for now, I think that's fine. Um, so yeah, those, that's basically the, the solution to the assignment. Um, you should definitely add some more CSS and try to style this a bit more to look how you want it to and to fit in the design of your site. Um, but that's pretty much what we're looking for. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, just reach out to me on email or Discord.